Have you ever thought about how your computer works? And how is it able to send and receive data around the world in a blink of an eye? I bet you didn't, believe me, it's a science you really want to explore. Hello and welcome to my YouTube channel, today we will talk about networking cables, its types and specifications. Connection between different computers among each other needed some serious efforts. To be very honest, it's a really vast, highly sophisticated networks of cables that make such wonders happen. And today we are going to talk about two main categories of these cables, one, network cables, two, ethernet cables. Now to make it conveniently understandable, let us first look at the difference between these two categories, before we get into each of their specifications separately. So, ethernet cables are in fact a type of network cables. Now I know my first statement about the two different categories was a little confusing, but it is convenient to take ethernet as an outstanding category of the network cables for better assortment and less confusion. Ethernet cables are a type of network cables which are used in wired networks and allow for relatively narrower range, as in distance, connections and data transmission, and they are also used to supply power. Now, what makes them really a whole assortment in and of themselves is that specified to operate at high speed in Ethernet environments i.e., local area networks, metropolitan area networks, and wide area networks. These cables are mainly comprised of copper or aluminum cables. On the other hand, Network cables is sort of a super category which includes all kinds of cables that are used in any kind of computer and data networking. They are used to connect computers, computer networks and networking devices, and allow high bandwidths of data transfer over a wider range of distances. Network cables include all types of cables used for networking purposes, regardless of the medium being wire connected or wireless like Wi-Fi, and materials used in their manufacturing. All right. Now that we have a surface understanding of the difference between these two, let's look into their types and specifications individually. Network cables, there are many types of network cables available in the market, mainly including, coaxial cables, twisted pair cables, and fiber optic cables. Coaxial cables use wires made from conducting metal as a medium of transmission. Coaxial cables are not inherently specific to computer networks. In fact, these cables were in use for power supply purposes even before computers were invented. And thus, naturally, at the initial stages of development of computer networking, network administrators began using these cables for building networks. However, with rapid advancement of digital networking and subsequent need for faster and faster transmissions and higher bandwidth, the use of these cables was discontinued completely in the 90s. These cables have a core made out of a conductor, mainly copper or copper-clad steel, which carries the data in the form of electric signals. The core is encircled by insulating material which functions as a dielectric, and the insulator is covered with a braided shield or foil of the same conductor used in the core, which shields and protects the core from external electromagnetic interference and noise. And all these components are enclosed within a layer of flexible PVC sheath to protect them from physical damage. These cables mainly utilize radio frequencies for transmission. Coaxial cables have further two types based on whether the core is made of a single thick conducting wire called a single-core coaxial cable, or multiple thin strands of wire, called as multi-core coaxial cable. Specifications of a coaxial cable are a function of the type of the core conductor used, the insulating material and the thickness of the sheath. Based on which, there are four main coaxial cables used in computer networks, RG6 cable comes with a small diameter, copper or copper-clad steel core and is used for connection and transmission and cable internet services and cable TV, over long distances. It provides high bandwidth and high frequency transmission and is best suitable for carrying digital and video signals. Your TV antenna is probably connected to your TV through one of these. Or maybe your modem has one. RG8 cable comprises a larger diameter, copper, clad steel core. These cables are more suitable for carrying radio transmission signals as their design renders them inefficient in carrying video signals. RG8 cables are mainly used in audio control rooms, radio stations and radio antennas. RG59 cable is similar to RG6 cable except that its core is even thinner than RG6 and allows for low frequency transmissions over shorter distance. Twisted pair cables are fundamentally similar to coaxial cables in components, except that the twisted pair cables, as the name implies, contain two insulated core wires that mutually intertwine to form a spiral. Each of these wires carry equal signals in opposite directions, which helps to cancel out M interference or in simpler words, allows the receiver to distinguish between wanted and unwanted signals. Based on assembly, twisted pair cables have two types. Shielded twisted pair, STP, cables, contain a fine mesh of conducting wire or foil around them, forming a uniform sheath. This sheath ramps up the protection of core from electromagnetic interference. However, on the downside, 
Shielding makes these cables more bulky and relatively expensive. They allow faster transmission over shorter distances, which is why these cables are mostly used in certain Ethernet applications. Unshielded twisted pair UTP, cables, on the other hand, lack this sheath and thus render the wire relatively more vulnerable to signal interruption and corruption. Although interference is high in these cables, they ensure less crosstalk, which means the mutual interference between nearby signals and better signal quality over longer distances and therefore are mostly used for digital or analog telephony and high-speed computer communication in local area networks. Fiber optic cables are by far the most sophisticated and efficient type of network cables. These cables are awesome. They consume less power, eliminate M interference, provide greater bandwidth than any conductor cable could ever provide, and are cheap and lightweight. Plus, they look cool. The cables are fundamentally different from all other cables in that they use light, instead of electric signals as a medium for signal transmission. A fiber optic cable contains multiple thin strands of glass fiber enclosed inside a plastic casing and a jacket. They are specially designed for long distance, efficient telecommunications and data networking. They provide incredibly high bandwidth without any electromagnetic interference. A single optical fiber link in a commercial network can transmit roughly 10 billion digital bits per second. Their high speed and bandwidth capacities allow satellite communications. Getting a little deeper into the structure of optic fiber shows that each fiber consists of two parts, the core and cladding. These two layers differ slightly in their refractive indices with cladding having lower refractive index than the core, in order to ensure total internal reflection of the light signal so that the light signal can pass through bends in the cable without any signal losses. Optical fiber cables are mainly used for networking at global scale. Single mode fiber, these fibers have small diameter core ranging between 5 to 10 micrometers and allow only a single mode of light to propagate. Usage of single mode light ensures lesser dispersion of the light along the way which decreases signal attenuation, or in simpler words signal losses, which in turn allows signal to propagate through larger distances without losing much energy. In order to produce single mode light signals, these fibers need laser as input devices. But the downside is that lasers are expensive and require safe handling to avoid damage that might be caused by extreme concentration of energy. Multimode fibers, multimode fibers, on the other hand, have larger core, ranging between 50 to 100 micrometers in diameter, on average, based on the country standard you follow. The larger core allows multiple modes of light to propagate through, which is to say, that it allows more data to pass through. However, larger diameter of the core also allows greater dispersion and scattering of the light causing larger signal attenuation, which impedes the signal's ability to propagate farther distance due to energy losses. LEDs are utilized as signal input devices in this case, which makes the whole process much cheaper than the single mode fibers, but allow lesser bandwidth and shorter range. And finally, based on the material used in fiber, optic fibers are either plastic optical fibers, you guessed it, are made of plastics or a more sophisticated term polymers. Polymethylmethacrylate is the polymer used as core in such fibers. Glass fibers, well, the name is pretty self-explanatory. Isn't it? So, we move on. Ethernet cables, despite being a type of network cables, deserve an exclusive category of their own for the fact that these cables are most closely related to people's day-to-day -day interactions with electronics and commonplace telecommunication. These cables provide wired connections over shorter distance, such as connecting your PC, routers or switches within a LAN. Since these cables being a physical connection inside a network, their functionalities are limited due to length and durability issues. And in order to circumvent these limitations, multiple versions of Ethernet cables are available for specific purposes, to draw optimum utility. All Ethernet cables are usually backward compatible, which means that they all have the same connector port, the RJ45 connector. Here is an overview of the specs and utility of most common Ethernet cables categories. The CAT in each category name stands for category and the numbers represent the standards and specifications of each cable. Okay now, starting from CAT 5E, the E here stands for enhanced. This is the upgraded version of the original and now updated version CAT 5. This is currently the standard version for the Ethernet. These cables can support up to one gigabytes of data per second and are perfect for basic internet usage like browsing, Online social networking etc. CAT6 is currently the next best after CAT5 and might as well replace CAT5 very soon. These cables support up to 10 gigabits per second of speed. A whopping 10 times faster than CAT5, which makes them ideal for functions that require more data speed, like online streaming of TV shows, or online gaming as well as some small networks like schools or startup offices with small number of computers. 
CAT 680A stands for augmented and makes for the upgraded version of standard CAT 6, and provides better signal quality due to additional protection from electromagnetic and radio frequency interference through shielding. It allows for a better signal quality in the vicinity of any high-power devices, radio towers or electricity grids that could cause heavy interference. CAT 7 This one provides up to 100 gigabits per second of speed and are shielded to avoid interference as their main utility lies within high energy consumption and saturated networking environments. These are suitable for professional uses, inside large corporations and network rooms. CAT 8 takes a step ahead in bandwidth and provides double the bandwidth as compared to CAT 7, however, on the downside, for now it can only support 40 gigabits per second of data per second, and is durable only over a distance of 30 meters or shorter. These cables are only suitable for compact data centers for the time being, until it improves in the coming years. So, guys, this is bringing us to the end of the video, and I hope it helped you understand the world of cable networking a little better. If you like this video, consider giving it a thumbs up and subscribe my channel for more informative stuff. And hey, don't forget to hit the bell icon, and stay tuned for the next video.